satisfaction. So why is it so important that um, we are looking into this? This uh, really actually constitutes a major public health concern and it represents the highest incidence of newly acquired sexually transmitted infection. Uh, and more significantly, as we all know, a specific type of fish screening has been implicated in the etiology of cervical cancer and also other genital malignancies. So how common it is? It has been reported that 650 million people are infected worldwide and of which 20 million are in North America. And of those who are infected, 15% of them are aged between 15 and 15 years uh, age group. And studies have shown that 6.2 million new infections occurred every year. And of these people, 50 to 75 percent of sexually active adults are infected with at least one type of HPV during their life. Okay, this slide shows the age-specific incidence of HPV infections. The infection rates are, are highest in the sexually active women in the age less than 25 years old. And in young HPV negative women, community incidence for the first HPV infection is 32% at 24 months and 43% at 36 months. Again, from this table, you can see that um, the HPV infection seems to be highest in the adolescent age group. Those with who are less than 20 years age group, the prevalence range between 64 to 82 percent. So what is HPV? Okay, it is a papilloma virus, a small non-enveloped double-stranded DNA virus which is very resistant to treatment with ether acid or heat. However, in the moist environment, it can remain infectious for many, many months. And at a very high temperature, it can be deactivated. So the, they are very similar in genetic organization and appearance by electron microscopy in all the HPV viruses. And to date, more than 100 types have been identified based on their genetic sequence of the outer capsid L1. And this virus depends on the host cell's replication and transcriptional machinery and can be divided into cutaneous and mucosal types. Okay, there are more than 60 cutaneous types that have been identified. And these are the viruses that cause the skin warts, the warts on the hands, on the feet, as well on the trunks. At the same time, there are 30 to 40 endogenital or mucosal types, which we can further subdivide into the high risk and the low risk group. Okay, the high risk HPV, as we all know, among the commonly known ones are the 16, 18, 31, 33, and so forth. And these are the ones that are highly associated with cervical cancer and other endogenital malignancies. Uh, and as we also know that more than 70% of uh, survival cancers are caused by HPV-16 and AD. The, there are 10 to 15 of the non-oncogenic types of the low-risk group and the commonest one are the type 6 and 11. And these are associated with most genital warts, which occur in 90% of them, low grade lesion of the cervix as well as the current respiratory papillomatosis. Okay, how are they being transmitted? Okay, the transmission of HPV can be divided um, into sexual and non-sexual routes. Okay, the sexual routes can also be divided into the penetrative and non-penetrative ways. So most of the HPV are transmitted by a, a sexual intercourse. However, it can also occur by a non-penetrative sexual contact, such as from genital to genital, manual to genital, and oral to genital. HPV transmission or infection has been reported in virgins and most likely this must have occurred via a non-sexual uh, contact. <laughs> and it has also been shown that the use of condoms may reduce the risk of HPV infection, however it is not fully protected. The non-sexual roots can be divided into the vertical transmission, though very rare, it can occur from mother to the neonates during birth, and this may lead to the papil uh, respiratory papillomatosis, which can be fatal because it can cause airway obstruction. The other hypothesis is that uh, HPV virus can also be transmitted um, via formites to the undergarments, surgical glove, or biopsy faucet. However, this is not well documented. 
Okay, so what are the risk factors for HPV infection? Okay, being young is the commonest risk factors, and the reason for this is because of the immaturity of the um, epithelial lining um, of the mucous membrane, make it more susceptible for HPV infection. For male, the uncircumcised horse skin uh, can harvest uh, HPV virus and also make it more susceptible uh, for infection. And of course, greater number of part-time and recent sexual partners are highly implicated as a risk factors for HPV infection. Smoking has also been said to be one of the risk factors, however, this is not well documented and is controversial. And of course, the other one is immunocompromised patients, people who had renal transplant, people who are HIV positive, they are at high risk of getting HPV infection. So what happens you know, when one gets infected? So HPV virus selectively infect um, the cretinous squamous epithelium of the skin and as well as the non cretinous squamous epithelium of the mucous membrane. Although the primary target is the stretched squamous epithelium, HPV virus can also infect the columnar epithelium. And when the initial infection occurs, it will lead to the production of HPV antibodies in half or two thirds of the infected, infected individuals. However, the rate of slow conversion is slow and the antibody responses are very low. So the, the acquisition of the infection usually occurs within the first several years of sexual encounter. So most of these infections fortunately are transient and asymptomatic. So there is no clinical disease, you cannot see anything, the virus will clear automatically by the body immune system. The mean duration of infection is said to be between 6 to 8 months after which it will clear. However, the high risk types of HPV are more persistent than low risk type, and HPV 16 has been shown to persist longer than the others. And also, persistent high risk infection is associated with increased risk of progression to the neoplastic disease. There was a study that was done uh, among female college students by Paul and at all, and they found that those who recently acquired new infection by HPV, the virus will become uh, undetectable in 70% of them within 5 months, in more than 30% within 18 months, and in 90% after 2 years. So after 2 years, in 90% of those who newly get infected by HPV virus will not have the virus anymore. So what happened when um, the cell got infected by the HPV virus? So I'm going to take the cervical epithelium as example. So the virus will enter the cell through the microabrasion of the surface epithelium. So this is the target cell. So the one on the left is the normal epithelium and the one on the, in the middle is the infected epithelium. So once the, infect, the virus entered the cell, it will integrate with the cells and then start producing the DNA in the cell nucleus. And subsequently, the virus together with the cell, they will duplicate together in the proliferative phase of the epithelium. And once the host basal cell differentiate into mature keratinocytes, they will send a signal to the virus to produce more and more viral particles. So at the end, the viral is assembled, and then from the surface epithelium, it will shed uh, infectious virus particles. So this is what happened. So duration from infection to generation of infectious virus take at least six to twelve weeks, and this is actually the time which is required for a basal keratinocyte cell to differentiate up to the epithelial layer to this human at the top. Uh, for oncogenic HPV infection. Oncogenes D6 and D7, this will cause cytogenetic instability and genetic changes in the cells, which subsequently will allow the uncontrolled growth of the cell, and this is what leads to the malignant transformation. So what, how does the body respond when uh, it gets infected by HPV? So it can either progress, of which the lesions will develop, and one will develop some form of either malignancy or force. It can also persist. 
So WHO defined persistent at least detection of same HPV type on more than one occasion on at least 12 months in the world. Persistence of high risk types of HPV may be crucial for the development of cervical precancer and cancerous lesion, but it's not necessary for progression. At the same time, the virus also can remain a latent period where the individual will be completely asymptomatic and the virus will only be detected when we do example HPV DNA testing. And the virus which is a latent period can be reactivated and subsequently progress and produce disease. And of course, um, the virus can also be cleared where it's eradicated by the immune system so you will not get any more infection. So let's look at the, what happened for a low risk type HPV. So once after initial HPV infection, if the body immune system is not able to clear the virus within six months, the individual can develop either external genital or um, survival to try to kill the patients. However, in more than 80% of the people, this fight this happen, um, the, the virus can still be cleared from the body. So HPV infection will stimulate the cell growth, leading to irregular thickened upper cell layers containing the colocytic cells. So that the presence of colocyte is indicative of HPV infection. I'm sure this has been talked a lot yesterday during the pre-symposium. So these are just some of the condyloma that can happen. So you can get it on the skin and the perianal area of the vulva and the mucous membranes. The one on the right and the lower part are those two ones that I got when I was in South Africa. The incidence of genital warp is very, very common there because of the high incidence of HIV. So the patient present with huge genital warp, which you can't do laser for the patient, you have to contract, and some of them especially uh, go into malignant transformation. So what happens if one gets infected with high-risk HPV types? So after initial infection, as we have known, most of the patients will clear the infection. However, if the infection continues after three to six months, one can either develop, again, they can also still develop warts, but they also can develop the uh, cervical intra-epithelial lesion. And if the virus persists for two to five years, that is when the disease progress to CIM2 or 3. And after decades, the virus persists in the body, that is when the malignant transformation will occur. So this is the schematic um, diagram on the carcinogenesis of the HPV infection on the cycle epithelium. As you can see that over time, uh, the normal epithelium will be transformed into invasive carcinoma with the presence of HPV virus. These are just uh, some of the examples of what we can see on corposity for CIN1, 2 inspirations, and the lower part is the friend of the For both high risk and low risk HPV types can cause uh, low risk primus intra epithelial of the cervix. Risk of high cell development is 14 times higher in women who are test positive at least three times for high risk HPV compared to HPV negative women. 15 to 30 percent of women who are test positive for high risk HPV test types will develop high seal lesion within four years. And the rate of progression from high seal to invasive cancer is approximately 1.5 percent at two years. All right. Okay. So, in summary, okay, this just as I said, this is talking about the natural history of HPV infection. So, you can see that after exposure to HPV, the acute infection can either cause a subclinical infection, which is self-limiting. There is no symptoms, there is no clinical evidence, and the virus will clear in more than 90% within two years. At the same time, the virus can remain in latent phase, where uh, it can be reactivated in the future or in immunocompromised patients, and subsequently become a clinical disease. But at the same time, after acute infection, the virus can straight away cause a clinically evident disease. So, example, it can cause warts, 
Malaysia and one nation and it proceeds and progress to sign to a key uh, to look subsequently into invasive cancer. Thank you.